Jonas Vingegaard was released from the hospital in the Basque country after several surgeries and 12 days of anguish for all of us who love the sport and want to see the top stars always in top condition. Although there are no estimated timelines for his return, the, shall we say, obscurantism of the Visma Lisa bike team regarding this only invites conspiracy theories about a possible participation in the Tour de France 2024 for our beloved Danish anchovy. A certain YouTuber who won a Vuelta Espana has rather unexpectedly advised him already, Jonas, if you can, participate in the Grand Boucle. It's your chance to prove that you are a Superman who overcomes any misfortune, like the fall you suffered. And so we think that the little dictator of world cycling and Richard Plurger have a plan. A remote chance to win the Tour de France, and this is something that Taddy Pogacar and the rest of the rivals have to take into account. A 110% clean plan. One that has been followed in the past by other riders, such as friend of the channel, Bianca Reese, the bison cook, Juanjo Cobo, and even Lance Armstrong himself. A very trollish plan that has its beginnings after the fall of the Belgian bot and Doise van Flanderen. Now, you can always leave us a super thanks if you trust the Danish herring scented Cervelo to still be the best bike for the 2024 Tour de France. And now, without further ado, let the show begin. On the same day that Van Aert broke his collarbone and waved goodbye to his prospects at the Giro d'Italia, Matteo Jorgensen capped off his impressive start to the season with victory. The last one by a Visma team rider, at least at the time that we're writing this script. It was the 18th win of a successful season for the Yellow Bees, a team which had won on all sorts of stages with all sorts of different riders. Since then, however, nothing but misfortune has befallen Plurger's team. Of course, all the spotlight has been on Vingegaard's crash, but there has been far less on the strange season of two of the team's mainstays, podcaster Van Baal and European champion Laporte. Not only have they been performing at a pauper's level in 2024, but they have even been collecting DNSs throughout the season prompting some to think of possible covert sanctions by David Lepartion's UCI. Oh, poor dupes, Visma is not sanctioned. And for proof, the impressive Amstel Gold Race that Tish Benot rode just a few days ago. In a competition in which the grandson of cycling began as the main red-hot candidate after his exhibitions at Flanders and Roubaix, very few put the focus on the Belgian rider who had always competed very well in this type of race. And what's more, there was talk of Benoit dropping out because he was going to be a father that very same day and had told the team directors. While Vingegaard watched the race from a hospital room, Benoit put on one of the greatest displays of his career and was undoubtedly the strongest on the toughest climbs of the competition. However, it went totally unnoticed as people preferred to look at how Marie von Sevenen could get naked or cry on social media because Mathieu von der Poel took that day off after a week full of parties, simply hoping to win if the escapees were thrown off, just as happened to him in his 2019 victory in this race, when the significant other of Marion Roos and the TUE Dane linked with Michele Ferrari fell asleep in the final kilometre. In the final sprint, Benoit couldn't win against the very suspicious Mark Hirschi and British multi-tool Tom Pitcock, the rider who'd complained about high speeds just seven days ago, who'd abandoned the 2024 at Zulia on the first day due to strange ailments, and had this very race stolen from him in the 2020 edition so that a Dutch team could celebrate a home win. Thomas Pitcock stole the spotlight in one of the most entertaining competitions of the season, as when the aliens are away or not racing, cycling can still generate excitement. However, Vingegaard must have made a note in his notebook of teammate Tish's show on that day that he was going to be a father. The same show that Tim van Dijker put on in Roubaix by hanging in there with the best at Aremberg. If anyone thinks Visma is going through a bad time, it's simply because of the misfortunes of the crashes, not because the team is suffering from some strange legal consequences. Now we could say the same thing about Flesh Wallon, the most predictable race on the calendar that gave us one of its most fun editions ever, 
one that will have been thoroughly enjoyed by the anchovy with his dead Klaus as he watched the Danish alpha males, always Danish, of Uno X being the only ones who dared to finish the race as a complete set. If Vingegaard had been present at the first sign of snowflakes, the competition would have been stopped, as happened in Galicia 2023. But those who fought on deserve all our kudos, the most outstanding among them being Danish. Krag Andersen is no longer the same man of the flying sunweb of 2020, but he enjoys the protection of the team sponsored by hair doping, and he tried the impossible. A single man arriving at the finish in Hoi after attacking in extreme conditions more than 60 kilometers from the finish. After all, if his Bieber fan of a leader can do it, why shouldn't he? And it almost worked out well for him. His attack took the peloton into extreme speed mode, with many abandoning. Some were criticized by fans for doing so, such as teenage doper and Danish champion Matthias Schelmoser, shivering in the snow and cold temperatures. From here, however, we want to applaud him for having fought to the end. That's something for which he earns huge amounts of money, and surely he was able to have an ice cream in the hotel like his compatriots of Uno X. Winter rallies around hot volcanoes and on the shores of the Mediterranean caused massive dropouts, and only 44 heroes finished the race, including Benoit himself, who finished with an honourable ninth position, having just become a father. The winner was the much-improved Stephen Williams, with a devastating attack 300 metres from the finish line. The lanky British rider who took his first pro win in the 2021 Marsh and Bahrain victorious got the best win of his career, having already won at this year's Down Under. Adding to the list of very good performances for Sylvan Adams' Jewish team, who were killing it in World Tour events, with all but one of their English-speaking cyclists. The one who's said to be earning five and a half million euros a year has yet to show, but he's encouraging his wife to vent on Twitter all the same. But let's see, cycling highlights... Why did you bring us the recap of these two competitions in a video about Vingegaard? Well, friends, it's easy, because this is part of Jonas's master plan. Let's talk about other races. Let's talk about Poggi. Let's talk about his show at the Giro d'Italia. Let's worry about whether there are some much improved teams or whether Tobias Foss will finally win a stage. Let's talk about everything but him. Let him carry out his stealth preparation off the radar, taking off the favourite's mantle. And then maybe, when we least expect it, he will suddenly produce the anchovy and slap it around the faces of all his rivals. Lance at Alp Duas, with lessons that Ben Stiller gave him, showed us the way. And Jonas, if he's fit enough, will follow.